What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. This is going to be my comprehensive analysis and review of the Fallen banner this year called Forces of Will banner. So I'll be going over a lot of the builds that you could run on these units and how you can use them in different game modes. If you do enjoy these kinds of in-depth banner reviews, then I want you all to help me beat Fall on YouTube by leaving a like and subscribe. But with that said, let us begin. Fallen Dimitri is a Lance Infantry unit with 177 BST and he's going to be hitting like an absolute truck because he has got base 42 attack with a super boon in it. His speed is also pretty good at base 40 and his defense is high but his resistance is going to be absolutely low so he's really susceptible to any kind of mages but that doesn't really matter for his role. His role is to hit really hard in the player phase using his weapon Ventral Lance. So this is essentially a 19 might weapon because it does give you plus 3 attack and this weapon functions if he is alone. So you need to be solo for this weapon to activate. If that condition is met then he can get plus 6 attack and speed during the combat and if he has got more attack than foe's defense during the combat and if he cannot make a follow up attack he can basically deal true damage 50% of his overall attack stat subtracted by foe's defense. So this allows you to get some true damage against the opponents who do not let him follow up attack. So units who have got follow up negation or units who have got weary fighter, stuff like that which do not allow him to double, he can basically compensate for the fact that he's not doubling with some true damage. And this can also help him against extremely fast units who he might not be able to double. So even against them, he's going to be able to trigger this kind of true damage. So he doesn't have null follow up in his weapon. He, he doesn't really want to run that in a slot B because that's a unique skill. So this is pretty much his way of compensating against those units who do not let him double attack. And against those kinds of bulky units, he can definitely get a really, really good hit. Just one singular hit. And that can actually allow him to kill them even if they are having the weapon strangle advantage a lot of the times because of how hard uh, Fallen Dimitri just hits. His slot B skill is Murderous Lion and this is basically the near trace skill so it provides him with Kanto and remaining movement plus one and if he's not adjacent to any kind of ally again he wants to be solo for this skill to be active as well then he can inflict minus three speed and defense to buff on the foe and the foe cannot counter attack. So this is not part of a Trey skill. He basically gets the fire sweep effect with this exclusive skill and that is extremely strong because he can just hit extremely hard and not really get counter attacked back and he's also really fast so he's going to be able to double a lot of the things and the things that he's not going to be able to double he's going to be getting the true damage and the counter movement can be really good with odd tempest and that makes him pretty unique honestly because he's the only infantry unit in the entire game as of right now who does have a Kanto skill because Kanto skills are exclusive to flying units and horse units so he becomes pretty unique unit when it comes to hit and run as a lance infantry unit. The most annoying thing for Fallen Dimitri is that he doesn't get minus on special cooldown from his weapon and that means that he cannot really gale force as efficiently because if he runs time pulse in a slot C then he loses out on the odd tempest and because of murderous lion he cannot even let the enemy counter attack back. A lot of the times the units who do not have a minus one special cooldown weapon, the way they trigger Gale Force is by taking the hit from the enemy and then charging their Gale Force. But Dimitri can really do that so that hurts him a bit when it comes to Gale Forcing but still he can function uh, as a Gale Force unit. It's just that he's not going to be able to immediately trigger his Gale Force into hits like you would want him to if he had minus one special cooldown. So this overall kit basically locks Dimitri into a player phase focused playstyle where he wants to hit hard and get out of there with his exclusive slot B skill which has got Kanto. So he's basically like a hit and run unit. Compare this to Legendary Dimitri who has minus one special cooldown in his weapon and gets extra stats even to his defensive stats. Fallen Dimitri pretty much appears to be a more linear unit because he can hardly function in both phases. Not to mention Legendary Dimitri has even more consistent true damage in Atrocity. So I would still say that Legendary Dimitri is the better Dimitri and the best Dimitri right now in the game. But Fallen Dimitri also has a unique playstyle with hit and run using his exclusive slot B skill and absolutely hitting like a truck uh, because of his high attack stat. So that's his playstyle basically. So he is pretty unique for an infantry lance unit but you can draw comparison to Ingrid who is also a fire sweep cavalier and uh, her weapon is extremely good giving her minus one special cooldown. She also gets true damage based on her speed and she's a cavalry unit so she can run the near trace skill so she can also function as a hit and run 
fire sweep unit, but of course she doesn't really hit as hard. And uh, you can run his budget build by having attack speed solo 4 and also that in the sacred seal and he can hit really really hard. His attack stat is really high as it is and he can also run flashing blade and gale force. Again, he's not going to be able to trigger gale force in a single round of combat. Which can be annoying, but still, Gale Force allows you to have better usability with your Trace skill, or the Kanto skill rather, which he has got in a slot B. And if you want to have a 4 turn Gale Force, then you can run Time Pulse, but keep in mind that you're going to be getting rid of Odd Tempest. The thing with Odd Tempest is that it actually adds up to the Kanto movement, so that is really good for hit and running. So if you're running Time Pulse, then you're basically compromising a bit of hit and run potential in exchange for just the 1 round Gale Force. So he can do that if you want to and in my opinion like his best potential for gale forcing comes if he ditches vengeful lance so you can go with ninja yari plus and flashing blade 4 and he can be an insanely unique unit because he can quad attack and also have the fire sweep effect and that is pretty unique honestly because that allows him to trigger gale force and because of his already high attack stat he doesn't really mind the low might of ninja yari and Odd Tempest goes really well with this as well. So he can be a quad attacking monster with the fire sweep effect which is really unique and he also has the Kanto with his exclusive slot B skill. So Ninja Yari Plus is definitely a weapon you should consider. If you really like Fallen Dimitri, it's gonna be a really good option. And if you wanna kill first consistently on a budget, then you can definitely go with Slaying Lance Plus. Uh, Ventral Lance is a good weapon, but honestly, if you want to Gale Force, then there are other options like these, honestly. So Slaying Lance just works out on a budget for consistent Gale Forces, which is really good for hit and run. At max investment, you can definitely run something like Attack Speed Ideal, because he has got the Fire Sweep effect. So he's going to be at full HP most of the time in your hands. And the Odd Tempest buff does get countered for the Ideal skill. So that allows you to get easy plus 9 attack and speed, which is extremely powerful. And you can definitely go with the plus attack IV, which is a super boon, and he can hit extremely hard with that Heavy Blade and Glimmer. And at more investment, you can also run Heavy Blade 4 to get more true damage, and uh, you can run Time Pulse to have a 4 turn Gale Force. And he can hit extremely hard, and Time Pulse does make Gale Force into a 4 turn special. You can also use him in Arena if you do end up plus and merging him. And he can actually score as a 185 BST unit because of his exclusive slot B skill, which does score 300 SP. So if you run a 300 SP slot A skill and a slot C skill, then he can have increased arena scoring which is really good. So this also means that you are not going to be able to run Odd Tempest and you pretty much have to resort to a tier 4 skill. You can actually get a tight defense menace from this banner itself and that's going to be a really good skill that he can run. And it doesn't really interfere too much with the solo condition, so that could be done. And you can run Heavy Blade for that Gale Force. Alternatively, you can also run Heavy Blade 4 and Ruptured Sky. And with his extremely high attack stat, he can actually function really well in Arena, just damaging these plus 10 whale units extremely hard, and then get away from there because of his exclusive slot B skill. And that is a big thing, because in Arena, you do not have positional skills. So having that Kanto is extremely valuable for Arena usage. And finally, if you want to use him in Aetherite's offense, then you can use him as a Gale Force unit. He can not really drop in with Wings of Mercy because you want to run his slot B skill. And you can basically use this with a Gale Force team using Dagger maybe. And you definitely want to have a unit who can Infantry Pulse him down because with its curtains, Infantry Pulse and Quick and Pulse, you can basically have a one-tap Gale Force where he just has to hit the enemy once and he will trigger the Gale Force. So that can be utilized with his Kanto in the Light Season. In the Astro Season, we already have Regan. Um, so he definitely finds his place in the light season. I've actually made a dedicated video on Fallen Edelgard and the link to it is going to be in the description. Her section did take quite a bit of time in my banner review so I decided to just put it as a one-off video. So make sure to check it out because Fallen Edelgard is definitely the star of this banner. And now let's move on to Fallen Female Morgan. So she's an axe flyer this time around with Axe of Despair as her preferred weapon. She ends up having pretty good attack stat and she does have quite low speed at the exchange of having really good bulk and she also has base 35 resistance and also having base 41 defense which is really good. So Axe of Despair gives her minus one special cooldown which is really good for triggering Gale Force and at start of combat if she has got more than 25% HP then she can inflict minus six attack and defense debuff on the foe during the combat. And then the weapon adds up the values present in her buffs and also the debuffs present on the enemy. If the sum total is 5 or more then the opponent cannot make a follow up attack 
If it's 10 or more, then she can make a guaranteed follow-up attack and if the value is 15 or more, then she can also inflict the guard effect on the opponent. And they've given a pretty good example here with the attack defense menace skill that she's got going. So if she's got plus 6 attack and defense buff to herself and minus 6 attack and defense to buff on the enemy, the sum total basically comes to 24, which is more than what she needs to get all of the effects. So it's pretty easy to trigger these effects with the menace skill and just by giving her the buffs. Now keep in mind the attack defense menace skill does work only if the opponent is within 4 spaces of fur. If that's not the case then she's not gonna be getting any kind of buff from this skill. So it does inflict minus 6 attack and defense to buff on nearest foes within 4 spaces and also in return buffs up female Morgan. So you need the opponent to be in that 4 space range otherwise the skill is not gonna be giving you the buffs. And even then it's not really hard to trigger her weapon because you can just buff up Morgan and run allies who can have debuff, sabotage skills and stuff like that and you'll be able to easily trigger this weapon which is really good um, for a slow unit like her preventing the follow-up attacks from the enemies giving her an extra follow-up attack and also giving her the guard effect. Morgan's fodder is also really good. You could fodder her for attack defense menace because you can have the prerequisite on Petrine who does have the version 2 of that skill so it does branch off from threaten attack defense and you can also inherit dive bomb 3 at the same time with attack defense menace or you can have attack defense solo 3 along with attack defense menace so she can function really well as a fodder. And overall as an axe flyer she is really good because she can gale force really well because of her weapon. She does have good player phase potential and also she can take hits because of her bulk. So she can end up working out in both phases if you want to but, but she does come with dive bombs so that pretty much means that she is good to go when it comes to the player phase. So for her budget build you can just go with glimmer her default special and go with attack defense solo sacred seal and reposition and she's gonna be fine and hitting really hard. You can also run Heavy Blade 3 and Sacred Seal and have Bonfire so this allows you to trigger Bonfire on your second hit using your Dive Bomb and you can also run Gale Force on her which is going to be really powerful special because of the minus one special cooldown so she can trigger Gale Force in two hits with the Heavy Blade Sacred Seal even on a budget. If you want to invest a bit more into her then you can even give her Heavy Blade 4 as a slot is skill so that she can get the true damage and like I said before she does have the bulk so she can function in both phases so she can take out the dive bomb skill and just run guard bearing and this allows her to take a hit in the enemy phase and get that damage reduction and because she prevents the doubles from the enemies guard bearing ends up being a pretty good slot boost skill on her for the enemy phase and you can also run io shield sacred seal so that she doesn't get shot down by the archers and because she has the bulk she doesn't necessarily need dive bomb again so she can run the near trace skill Unfortunately, we do not have the attack defense trace right now. So if you do have the young version of Tana, then you can give her speed defense near trace. The speed part of the skill is quite wasted though, but still the proof of concept is using a near trace skill with guild force to function as a hit and run unit. And she can definitely take the hits from the opponents because of her bulk. At higher investments with merges and stuff like that, she can definitely go with this encounter because she does have the resistance to run that. And that definitely makes her pretty unique because a lot of these Axe Flyers, they have to choose between IO Shield or running Quick Repost with Guard Bearing. Female Morgan doesn't really have to do that because she does get the auto follow up from her weapon. So it does make her quite a bit unique unit in that aspect. So you can have Guard Bearing and Slot B and go with Attack Defense Rain. And you can easily trigger her weapon even with the allies. You don't necessarily need her menace skill if you do build a team around her. And you can definitely use her as a mixed phase flyer who can even function in the enemy phase with that bulk which she has got going. And if you want to use her in arena then you definitely have to run the attack defense menace because you'd have to run IO shield sacred seal which is not a high scoring sacred seal. But by basically doing that you can even take on the archers and uh, Lesnar Chrome is definitely going to be one of those annoying archers that she's going to be able to take on. And guard bearing is really good for her arena purpose because you can bait out one unit at a time a lot of the times so that works out in your favor and she can retaliate back with ruptured sky which can do a lot of damage. Unfortunately her weapon does debuff the opponent's attack but still in most cases this is going to be giving you a pretty good one shot potential. 
Fallen Mail Morgan is definitely the most underrated unit from this banner. This banner does have a lot of hype around Fallen Edelgard and Dimitri, but honestly Fallen Mail Morgan proves himself to be a really solid unit as you'll see later on with the builds and my explanations. So he has got Tome of Despair which gives him plus 3 attack and uh, this is pretty similar to Fallen Female Morgan's weapon where you basically want to have buffs on Male Morgan and have debuffs on the opponent and if that condition is met and if you have the total of 15 of the value then you can basically get the auto follow up, prevent the enemy's follow up and also have the guard effect. So that is really good and it pretty much works out similarly to Female Morgan's weapon. If you haven't seen that then you can watch that section to get an idea of how this weapon works and how the menace skill works. So Fallen Male Morgan ends up having pretty good base attack at 37 and he does have really good bulk for a mage having that balanced bulk, having high defense and also high resistance. In my opinion he's basically like a better Kyria. You can see that he takes inspiration from Kyria's bulk having that nice mixed bulk which is even better because of having better BST. Now he cannot really hit as hard as Fallen Julia or Kyria but I feel like the trade off is completely worth it because he can get a lot of the effects in his weapon which these two cannot. Like Fallen Julia has got the auto follow up but it requires her to be solo and Fallen Morgan's condition is even easier to get the trigger off so that he can get the auto follow up. Not to mention having that guard effect is just so invaluable for a slow unit like him and also the fact that he can stop enemies follow up attacks is really good. So he pretty much takes elements from Fallen Julia and Kyria and combines them into this really good top tier red mage I would say. He doesn't have light and dark of Fallen Julia but honestly he can just go with lull attack resistance and still do fine. He doesn't really have to be solo like Fallen Julia and he actually can double units really easily even in the player phase unlike Kyria. Kyria's weapon does have the daunt effect so even her allies can take advantage of that debuff but that is not the case with Male Morgan. So like I said I think it's worth it for all of the trade offs between these two and the good elements which Male Morgan combines. With Tome of Despair you definitely have to keep in mind that he doesn't get panicked because visible buffs play a big part into his weapon so panic is definitely an effect which you have to watch out for. Attack Res Menace does have the prerequisite of threat and attack resistance which you could obtain from Sonia and then you can basically fodder him off for the menace skill and then one of the other passive skills that he has got. He has got sabotage, defense and a slot B. I mean it does, I get it why they have it because they want to give the debuffs on the opponent but He's a mage, he doesn't exactly target the defense of the opponent. So <laughs> sabotage defense is really awkward in slot B of Male Morgan. So if you want to run a budget build then you definitely take that off because he doesn't exactly need that. He can run other skills in slot B. And you can just have dedicated allies with maybe phantom resistance like Temari Tethys or Temari Air uh, who can just debuff the opponents and that is much better. So you can run Desperation on a budget and that can give him pretty nice utility in the player phase when he's gonna be in that threshold. You can also go with the Link skill which can help him with the activation of his weapon because keep in mind that the Menace skill only activates when there is an opponent within 4 spaces of him. So in many situations when he's too far away from the opponents which is gonna be at the start of the map many of the times, he's not gonna be able to get the buffs. So that's why some alternate uh, ways of buffing him up does work out. And then finally if you want to invest a bit more into him then lull attack resistance is basically gonna be the skill that you could run in slot B because he already has the auto follow up so that could be done for the general content. But if you want to use him in ether raids offense then I would definitely suggest running null follow up. It might seem a bit weird running null follow up on such a slow unit but keep in mind this is the same concept as you know me running null follow up on myself if you have seen my ether raids videos and that works out really well. So having null follow up on an auto follow up weapon helps you basically get past effects like impact skills and the auto follow up skills that the opponents might have. And because Morgan is just so slow, dual lift can still double through his um, follow up negation which his weapon gives him. So that's why null follow up really helps you double down on that and um, if you want to see the results with a null follow up male Morgan just at plus one merge just at plus one you can get null follow up from the divine code section and if you give that to him and run this kind of build which I'm showing then you can pretty much get results like these now keep in mind these are absolutely max investment units it is going to be much easier for you most of the time because these are like plus 10 dual lift plus 10 Bramimon plus 10 Ledrin Lilina and even plus 10 Ledrin Chrome stuff like that 
So a lot of the times you're going to be facing these enemies at the lower merges, and I've only buffed him up for his attack and speed. So the matchups can be better if you run Temari Air and run Sabotage Attack Mila, stuff like that. So the matchups can get better. So here, he even survived something like a plus Sinophilia with Life and Death 4. So if she's got Hardy Bearing and an AoE special, he can still survive that, um, as long as she doesn't have Double Life and Death. And it goes same with Double Life and Death Legend Lilina as well. So as you can see, his performance against some of the most annoying range units in Aether 8's offense is pretty good. He can even survive the blue units like Legendary Chrom at plus 10 and also plus 10 Duo Alphonse when he just hits him with a very uh, meaty Ruptured Sky. So Mail Morgan even at plus 1 merge can function as an Aether Raid's offense carry with no follow up as you can see by the results and the matchups can actually get better. This is pretty much the worst case scenario. You're not going to be facing plus 10 dual lift every single match. Now keep in mind that just because you have null follow up does not mean that you're immune to the faster users of null follow up. They are still absolutely going to be able to stop your follow up attacks, but those are going to be rare. Most of the people do run lull skills on their ether rates defense units and impact skills most likely. So null follow up actually helps you a lot just getting past those impact skills and not running close counter in ether rates offense actually helps you quite a lot in collection of the pots because you can just let the dancers the melee dancers or just melee units um, attack Morgan and it's not going to be taking too much damage and you can just go ahead and collect the pots and as it is you're going to be facing more range units in ether rates offense so not running close counter is not the biggest deal here and attack rest solo which he comes with actually works out pretty well with them. So Null Follow Up really helps him with that because impact skills are super common and Duo Lift is a really annoying unit. And you basically want to run him in the Light Season because it does increase his resistance. And you also have access to Air who can run Temari Dagger and also provide him with the debuffs which does activate his weapon. So that helps him quite a lot, especially at the lower investments, increasing his resistance to really high to the point where he can like survive plus an Ophelias. That is no short feat. And if you want to run him in Aether Raid's offense as a Null Counter Disrupt tank, then that can also be done. And you can definitely use this in the Astro Season with some other tanks because the units with Fire Sweep effects and the Dazzling Staff units are pretty common. So Mystic Boost can be run to just disable the Wrathful Staff of those opponents. And you can even run the Smoke Skill yourself, like Attack Smoke or Resistance Smoke, to just trigger that. Now keep in mind, Odd Recovery is going to be pretty annoying thing for you to face whenever you come across that, or even Sarah, because that is going to be getting rid of the debuffs. So that is something that you have to watch out for, but still you can just buff him up. Uh, but again, just watch out for the panic. So while he's a good unit, there are definitely a few factors that you have to keep in mind, like those. And at higher investments, you can definitely go with Attack Res Unity with no follow up, and this allows you to just make him really powerful after the attack debuffs and the resistance debuffs and attack debuffs are going to be extremely common in the astro season because of mirabilis and at max investment for the general content close counter can be a pretty good skill that you can run just like how female morgan can run distant counter because he's just really bulky so that could easily be done and for arena male morgan is pretty much one of the best users of our dual infantry because the guard effect is really good and he also has the auto follow up so you can go with that and also run lull attack resistance and blue flame is your option here because we're decreasing the enemy's attack by quite a lot so ruptured sky will give you less damage still it's an option but i kind of prefer blue flame with this and you can also run mystic boost sacred seal he can certainly be used in ether Raid's defense because like i said he's a better carrier and, and you do see carrier from time to time in ether Raid's defense so he can be run with attack defense push for and lull attack resistance from Bramimond and you need to stack up his defense because the offensive attackers are mostly going to be physically based and attack res menace can actually be a pretty annoying thing for a lot of the vantage sweepers and the tanks which do park their tanks in the range of a morgan again within the four spaces so it can actually be pretty annoying for those opponents. But if the opponent is using some kind of hit and run team, uh, then they don't really have to worry about the mana skill. You can still run shrine structures and have stuff like sudden panic on your team, on a dancer or on a high HP unit, and that can make it easier for him to trigger his weapon. And you can definitely use him with Mirabilis because she can easily trigger Whimsical Dream to give Morgan the plus 5 attack and then debuff the opponent for minus 5 attack. So that just brings up the value to 10, which is really good. And Triandra can also work in the Dark Season, but you know, Isolation is much more prevalent in that. 
and at like max investment you can run ARD defense res and make him obnoxiously bulky with a farm skill. So he can be a very very tanky opponent who can also stop the enemy's follow up attacks. Fallen Edelgard is definitely going to be the most popular spark option and she's definitely the best unit out of this banner. But if you already got Fallen Edelgard then depending on which uh, menace skill you want to fodder off you can try to get Morgans and like I said before male Morgan is actually a pretty good red mage. So if you're lacking those then you could try to get him and if you're more interested in Dimitri's head and run playstyle then he's also an option. So if you have already got Fallen Edelgard through summoning and if you have reached the spark point. It really depends on your barracks and which kind of unit you really want to have so you can spark them. So hope you all enjoyed my in-depth review on the Fallen Banner. Make sure to share this video with your friends who are trying to summon on this banner or trying to build up any of these units. And I want to thank all of my YouTube members for their constant support and if you enjoyed then please be sure to leave a like and a comment helps me tremendously. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as minus one special cooldown on Vengeful Lands. So that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.